Hi, and I'm Richard Jordan, and uh, we're here today to talk to you a little bit about how we used uh, a bunch of simple equipment, um, $20 Raspberry Pi, $10 keyboard and mouse, and a little SD card to create our own little, um, what we call the Girls Tech Club, to help girls learn how to program. And uh, we're going to tell you how you can do the same thing, because it's great that we can teach a few, but if you guys can all go out and do the same thing, then we can, uh, we can hopefully get a lot more girls uh, programming. Uh, so to tell you how um, we came up with the idea, after, after doing a couple of hackathons together, my, my daughter and I, and uh, getting a bit of requests from other people to help, and say a little bit about the background for the idea, I'll, I'll let Alex sort of kick it off. When I was younger, my dad would go to a hackathon, and my mom and I would go, always go and pick him up. And I would always yearn to go and see more, and go to explore the hackathon. So last September, my dad, my dad and I did a hackathon and did a website called Super Fun Kids Time, which is a playdate finder. And then after that, a lot of parents were asking how to teach their children how to learn. And after that, we came up with, with we came up with the idea to teach other ch children how to code. And, and after that, the Girls Tech Club was born. I had the idea the girls tech club because I want my dad and I want to teach several more girls how to, to code and go. One of the reasons is because I want a lot of girls my age to learn how to code and also around my age we girls started to get less and less interested in coding so we decided to do this to catch them way, way before they're not interested to get them interested again. And the age groups we'll be doing this for is ages 9 to 13, where, which is kind of for a young age, and, but still old enough to know how to code. We'll be teaching girls how to code because coding is like a superpower, because you can change the world with only just, with just a few words. Right, and I think uh, the key point there that Alex makes is that uh, up until uh, about 12 years old, girls and boys, if you do the tests, you do the surveys, uh, pretty much equally equivalent, uh, equally uh, interested in uh, science and technology and engineering and mathematics, but somewhere around that sort of age group, uh, you know, sort of 13, 14, going onwards to, to, to the late teens, we, we lose a lot of them. And I think we lose them because they, we don't get to engage them early and they get very easily distracted by the same things that distract us all in the teens. And, and what we're trying to do is, is capture them while there's the potential to get them interested uh, so we don't lose them. So by the time we get to 18, we've got a much more close to, to, to the situation we're at when they're 12, right? Where we've got as many girls interested in this stuff as, as, as we have boys. Um, so, so what is it that, we, we, um, you know, that, that, that we've done? So what we've done is we've created um, uh, what we call the, the Girls Tech Club, and it's 90 minute sessions every week, uh, currently for fourth and fifth graders, but it's the sort of thing you can expand to, to, to any age group really and, and, and what we, we're trying to do is really just just tell people here's a format that works for us here's a bunch of lessons plans that work for us we're going to put them all up on github so that everyone can share them you can have ideas you can share ideas you can all do the same thing because one of the things that we found was um, holding people back was this idea that to, to learn to program we're going to have these thousand dollar computers and laptops and, and, and uh, whatever it needs to, to, to teach kids to code that's not necessary. We found that for $50, you can put together uh, an entire equipment, and we want to teach people how to do it properly. So these 90 lessons, minute lessons, you can't take nine and 10 year olds and sit them down for an hour and a half and learn. So we, we have about five minutes introduction. We do 20 minutes of what did we do last week? Let's just remind us what we've already learned. Um, 10 minutes of exercise, that's really, really, really important. It's one of those key things that um, is underestimated in, in, in making people successful at doing programming and that kind of thing. Get out there, get to do some exercise. The middle section is that middle 20 minutes. That's when we're going to learn something new. And I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute about what those lesson plans are. Learn something new, get up and run and down, do a bit more exercise, do the last 20 minute session of this is what we've just learned. It's the classic sort of tell them, tell them, tell them again. And by doing that, we think that in three sort of 10 to 12 week uh, segments, we can get people up to the stage whereby 
next time there's a hackathon coming around, it can be your girls coming along and uh, and doing this. And yes, we call we, we focus right now on, on, on the girls because the disparity issue. But this is this is really a, a process that you can do for any kind of kids. And, and and we you know we're hoping to launch a more generic sort of kids tech club as well. So um, yeah, so so the the approach has been very. Um, uh, simplified from what we started out with. A lot of people have seen things out there like um, uh, Code Academy, which Alex learned uh, some, some coding on. Uh, there's, there's a lot of learning tools. But we started sort of taking it back and thinking, out, how, did, how did I learn a program? How did a lot of the people I know learn a program? And they weren't going on a website, uh, going through little code snippets. We had a command line in front of us. Uh, we, 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 we learn by hacking around and fiddling out what's new. And that's really the model that we've taken. We use the command line, we use very, very simple tools, like uh, very, very simple text editors. We start by teaching people how do computers work. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, how do, but but it's, 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 it's something that's hidden from a lot of kids when they, they get on the iPad or these, these other sort of uh, uh, more complex sort of systems. And then we teach them the good habits. We teach them how to write tests for their code because you know that's how you write better code. We teach them how to pair program from the beginning, not because uh, we, you know, we, we're evangelists for extreme programming or anything, but because we use less computers when we put two kids in front of one computer. So that's a really awesome reason for doing pair programming, and it's also a good habit to get into. So um, we teach in Ruby. Um, that's my preference. Uh, we do it because uh, it's very beginner friendly, but you can try other languages. There's a great thing called snake wrangling for kids if you're going to teach kids how to program in Python. Um, there's a lot of JavaScript uh, tools out there. Um, and a lot of people just get a lot of success out of teaching kids how to write web pages using HTML and CSS to start off with. That's a, that's a great sort of starting point too. Um, so we're doing it in three stages. The first is, let's just see if in 10 to 12 weeks, 12 weeks we can get kids able to write a little bit of code and put it out there on GitHub so their friends can see it, they can share it, and they can, you know, they can see it out. They can say, I made this. Um, the second stage is to say, well, this is great, but you don't have to invent all the code yourself. People have written things already. How can we use other people's libraries and frameworks to build, uh, to build maybe a, a web app? So using things like Sinatra and Rails to, to build simple web apps. Again, we're, we're just talking hello world here, but it's, uh, it, it's, it, it gives them the sense that they've actually done something. And then the, then the final aim is to give them a project and then the, over 10 to 12 weeks, hopefully get to the stage whereby they got the confidence to do projects on their own and then they can go and do a hackathon. And there's a few hackathons in the area that are very keen for us to, to get a girls tech club table and see if we can actually you know, produce something in a weekend of, of hard work. So to get into the, to, to the, the details of what the lesson plans are, and I apologize that the slides aren't a little bit more ritzy, but we were uh, having a few problems actually getting a Raspberry Pi hooked up for you guys. So uh, if you want to see what this actually looks like on the Raspberry Pi, we'll, we'll post a bunch of screenshots up to, up to the uh, Girls Tech Club hit, uh, GitHub over the weekend. And you can go on there and you can see what this actually looks like in, in, in real life. But the first lesson is just dead simple. It's switching this thing on. You know, how do we plug in? How do we plug in our little Raspberry Pi? And how do we actually make this thing um, so that we can write a little bit of code. And, and it's, not, um, it's not even essential straight away to start writing code. The first thing is, how do we navigate around a computer? What is, what is a computer? Well, it's just a series of text files, recent, really. You can read them, you can write them. And we write them in a way that other people who want to do programming can read them, and then the computer can understand what we want. That's really all it is. It's not, there's no, no, no secret magic here. Um, and, and teaching kids that they can write these text files, they can run them, they can navigate around the command line, they can find files. That's this very, very simple first lesson. And as, you, as, you, as I said, these lessons are already broken down really into 20 minute chunks. Yes, it's a, a 90 minute lesson, but it's tell them, tell them, tell them again. So in the 20 minutes, we really just, that first lesson, get them comfortable with opening up a file, finding it, saving it, that kind of thing. We move on to getting the hello world up because you know, again, that's how we started. Back in my day, it was basic. It was line 10, print my name, and then line 20, go to line 10, and the, my name goes down the screen. Very, very simple hello world, but that's what we get people up and doing. Uh, obviously, a little bit different than that. We, we, we teach them how to open up an editor, write a file, save the file. Oh, we didn't save it right, doesn't run, let's run the file. Again, these very short, bite-sized lessons. 
but by the end of it, they've got the, got the confidence to print the name on the screen and, and go into the console and, and test out whether or not the code that they've written is working. Very, very, very simple. But by this stage, we're sort of a couple of weeks into this, and now we can actually start teaching them what, uh, what perhaps you guys think of as coding. You know, what is a number? What is a string? Uh, you know, you know what, it, what, what is it that we have to do to, to pass these things around? What are variables? Uh, you know, what are methods? How do we do control flow? You know, if this happens, then else. And this is what we do over a series of lessons. So, so this is really the meat of the course over a few weeks. And, and we found a few things that, that do and don't work. And again, the, the reason for us putting all these lesson plans up on GitHub is so that you guys can go in and you can start your own clubs. And you can say, this doesn't quite work for me. So we've sketched out a slight, you know, we've forked the lesson plan a little bit. We've, we've made our own sort of variants on this. And this worked better for us. And that's what we want. We, you know, we don't think that Alex and I have all the answers here. We've just done something that works for us and that we think worked for a few of our friends. And, and just to be clear, we're only a little bit of the way in this. We've not finished this program for anybody. So we're learning as much as you are. But once we got through that sort of phase, uh, you know, we, we, we have to ask, you know, the, the next question is, well, this is great. You've shown me how to do all this stuff, but how do I know it's actually doing what we do? Well, of course, the first way we do that is we just run the program. We write a bit of script, we run it. But that gets a little bit tiring. And if we've got, if we just learn about control flow, if this, then that, there's lots of paths through the program. Well, how do we test that? We write automated testing. You know, what, what do we know? What do we have at our disposal that's very good at running repetitive tasks? A computer. Why not make the computer test our code, see if we've written good code? So we teach them how to write code, write tests. Which, of course, brings up the next question, where do I keep my tests? If I've got this file with my text in, so now I need multiple files, and now we have to start thinking about organizing code. Again, very simple. We have a test file, we have a code file. How do we require the code file and the test file to run the tests? How do we organize our code up into classes? And these, these concepts, they sound intimidating. They were intimidating to me when I first learned them. But when you learn them in a gradual way like this, they become very easy to understand, They're very, very, uh, very non-threatening. Basic object orientation, how do we pass messages around between these objects? And all this sort of stuff. So we're about sort of six to eight weeks in. People understand just the basics of, of, of how to do this. Um, and then finally, we, we, we get to the stage of how do we not lose our work? You know, it's great that we keep doing this, but what if I just write a load of rubbish and save it in the file that I've just spent weeks building up and, and learning? Well, there's a, there's a tool for that too. There's a tool called, you know, doesn't really matter what they call it, but it's called Git and we all use it. And we, it, it saves versions of the file. We can roll it back. But Alex was just asking me the other day, you know, what if I say the wrong version? Well, we roll back. We, we find out what, it, what, what, what the last version that worked was. We go back to that. We've not lost anything. And the great thing about Git, of course, is that we have tools like GitHub, which let us go up and um, save them. And, then, and now we're at the stage whereby we can share our projects with everybody else. And that's really the aim of this sort of 10 to 12 week program. Now we understand how a computer works. We can write a little bit of code. We can test the code and see if it works. We can save it. And we can put it up on the shared place that all our friends can see it. And that's really what Girls Tech Club is all about. Uh, we do, you know, we haven't got into, but our, our ideas for the sort of phase two and phase three of this, what we hope to do, we're not there yet. You know, how do we build more of a com complex system? How do we collaborate on projects? You know, how do we make more than one person work on the same project? How do we use libraries and frameworks? How do we pull those sort of code in? How do we use things like Rails for building websites? How do we deploy our code to um, some of these things like Heroku and DigitalOcean? And again, the terms, they, they, they're not intimidating as the kids learn how to do this. And then our ultimate goal, which you know we're not at yet, is that we do a project, we do hackathons, and we try and get people out there and actually building some code. And at the end of this, some of the kids that do this program, they're going to do this. A few weeks later, they're going to go, yeah, I'm not interested in that. They're going to go back to you know, watching TV and, and sitting on the couch. But some of them, some of them, we hope, will say, you know what, this is awesome. And I want to do this. And this, as Alex said, this is my new superpower, right? This, is, this lets me control the world right? with, with, with just a few words. So that's basically what we're trying to do. How, do you want to get, how can you get involved? Um, so after this, we're going to put all, the, all of our, um, I don't know if I've said go, code on GitHub. We're going to put all the lesson plans on GitHub. And we're going to try and release them. Maybe every week we'll release another lesson plan. So people can follow along and share ideas. Um, 
And then we want you to start your own Girls Tech Club. So we've got girlstechclub.org, which again, we'll, we're, we're launching this weekend. So you'll be able to go on there and you'll be able to register your own tech club, do the same sort of things. All we ask is that you stick to the same sort of format as we're doing, broadly the same ideas. And you know, it's, it's like everything. It's out there for all of us to share. So, you know, just, 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 just use it, but don't mess it up. That's, that's what we're trying to do. And then, um, yeah, and then finally to, you know, we'll, we'll go, well, if you've got a few questions, we'd love you to, to ask them. There's a few ways that you can, uh, you can follow us. We've got girlstechclub.org. Uh, we will have kid, kidstechclub.org because, you know, this isn't just about girls. We don't want boys to do this too, but it's very important that we, uh, we give the girls their space because uh, that's definitely one of, the, one of the problems that we see in the tech industry right now. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, um, and we're running a Teespring campaign. If you're here today, over there, when you finish, we've got a bunch of t-shirts. Everyone can have a t-shirt. There's not many larges. There's a reason for that. If you want a large or an extra large or a, like me, fat bugger size, you need to go online, support our Teespring campaign, buy yourself a t-shirt, all the money goes to the tech club. But otherwise, any kids in the audience, lots of smalls, lots of mediums, take up a t-shirt. Uh, and go out there and start your own uh, tech club. So if you've got any questions, Alex and I would, would love to sort of take any questions. Uh, and if not, don't forget to get a t-shirt before you go. Thank you very much.